Hey there fellow viewers, today we have a topic that's been stirring up a storm. The recent bill passed by Ghana's parliament with major implications for the LGBTQ plus community. In February 2024, Ghana's parliament dropped a bombshell with a controversial bill criminalizing the LGBTQ plus identity. Now, just being who you are could land you in hot waters, but a possible three-year prison sentence. But wait, it gets even crazier. Not only is identifying as LGBTQ plus a crime, but forming a group or supporting it could land you behind bars for up to five years. Talk about tough love, Ghana. Now, you would think there would be some pushback, right? Well, there was, but it didn't quite hit the mark. Lawmakers shot down attempts to swap out prison time for community service and counseling. Tough crowd, huh? And let's not forget the big boss himself, President Nana Akufo. He holds the fate of this bill in his hands. He's made it clear that he'll only sign it into law if the people demand it. Talk about democracy in action. Now, to have a glimpse on how different people are taking this bill, we have lined up some reaction videos and we are getting into those right now. Let's get started and I'll catch you on the flip side. Yesterday, I posted this and pretty much stated that Ghana is off of my bucket list. And this comment here says that three years is not enough because literally the bill that Ghana just passed is that if you're convicted of identifying as LGBTQ+, you can face three but up to a five-year jail term because of that. And even some Ghanaians were in the comments saying, well, don't come then. And the issue is not whether or not I'll and other people will travel there or not. Because number one, tourism and travel is not the number one economic sustainer for Ghana. I believe it's like gold and cocoa. My issue is that why are you okay with that happening to your own people? What is it about being gay or trans is criminally offensive? Like there's murder, assault, robbery even. Being gay. And no, I'm not Ghanaian. But the person who wrote under the comments that I don't understand the culture and the tradition, you may be right. But what I do know as fact, is that LGBTQ plus people have existed since the beginning of time on that continent. So let's not act like this is like a new drop of gays, like it's a pair of Nikes. I am very disappointed with um, the parliament of Ghana to pass a anti-LGBTQ bill uh, criminalizing LGBTQ people. Um, this is very, very scary. And it could become a reality here in the States as well, too. Do not think that this is not a future that we can deal with. Um, when it comes to Africa and its homophobic rhetoric, when you study Africa before colonial times, there, this was not a thing. And I'm telling you, it wasn't a thing because I've actually studied it. Colonialism brought homophobic nonsense to hate for us to hate each other on so many different ways same thing here same thing in the caribbean and we need to voice and stand in solidarity with our queer people nationwide and all across the globe because this type of policy should not exist right now and it's very close to happening here in the states as well too when 50 bills circling around the country here in Connecticut, there's a bill called Let Kids Be Kids that's forcing you to out queer and trans people. There's a war on trans people and queer youth. Ghana's parliament has just passed a bill making it illegal to be LGBTQ+. Anybody convicted of identifying as LGBTQ+, could now face up to three years in prison. It also makes supporting queer rights illegal, with forming or funding an LGBTQ rights group punishable by up to five years in jail. Anybody involved in LGBTQ plus advocacy for under 18s could face 10 years in prison. Gay sex is already illegal in Ghana. This new bill isn't law yet, but it will be when Ghana's president signs it in. And he's already said that if the majority of Ghanaians want him to do that, he will. So my home country of Ghana um, decided that the best way to round out Black History Month would be by making it illegal to even identify as LGBTQ. Um, <laughs> And this could mean that like if someone reports you, you could get jail time. And it like just really puts a lot of the lives of LGBTQ people at risk. And I keep seeing like polls, absolute like idiots saying that like um what's it called? That like oh, but like 
oh isn't it so bad like because god doesn't allow polygamy like as a what like what about ism like why should they allow um being gay if they don't allow polygamy and this doesn't really work anywhere um especially in a place like ghana because your dad has 10 different children with 10 different women so clearly polygamy is just fine anyway we're cooked we're cooked when we talk about lgbt rights and decriminalizing lgbt in ghana people always go back to children and again it's misplaced priority you should have listened to everything that i said if ghana as a country cares about children our educational system will be better feeding children maternity leave our health care system all of those things are part of taking care of children. If somebody could go into a school and teach that crashing on same um, okay or whatever you are saying, that means anybody can walk into the school and teach their children anything. It's about our educational system, all the policies in the school. How can anybody who is not a teacher go into the school and teach children things? That means anybody could walk into a school and teach anything. I could walk in there and teach them how to steal. And here is the other thing about protecting children. Majority of children are abused and essayed by people they know. Uncles, grandfathers, stepfathers, fathers, brothers, cousins, pastors, teachers, the driver that's taking your child to school. And these are not about same couples or anything like that. These are grown men doing things to little boys and girls. Grown men who are married, who are seen as leaders in our community, who are harming these people. If Ghana cares about children, there will be laws protecting children. There will be stricter laws when it comes to childhood in Ghana. But that is not the case. Somebody could essay or such a, and they would tell them to buy a file to please the child. That's it. Somebody can such a, and they would tell that person to marry that child, and that's it. That is not caring about children. Now, from the reactions we've seen, it is clear that this bill has sparked quite the firestorm. But I mean, it's the chaos. There's a glimmer of pride from the African perspective. For many, Ghana's bold move represents a long-awaited accession of sovereignty. A chance for Africa to stand tall and express itself in the global stage. And let's not forget the struggles Africa has faced on its journey to freedom. From colonial rule to economic exploitation, it's been a long and winding road. So in a way, Ghana's stance can be seen as a symbol of resilience, a reminder that Africa is no longer content to sit in the shadows. Now, you might agree with this perspective, you might not, but it is very important for us to look at it from Ghana's viewpoint. Take Ghana just as any other African country. You see, most African countries look at any Western influence as something like a toxin or poison to their culture and the vitality of their people. I mean, it's not that Ghanaians are not concerned about their citizens, but what they are looking at is the influence that the West is having on the Ghanaian population and Africa at large. And so they are trying by all means to put an end to that. They are trying to express their own sovereignty through this bill. Okay. So you might be there maybe saying this is not fair on the citizens that are involved and that are concerned, which is true. But from Ghana's viewpoint, it is a way of expressing themselves as a sovereign state. Now, with that being said, it is very important. If you have something to say about this, you can leave your thoughts in the comments. Now, let's look at the international implications that this may have. Specifically, let's talk about sanctions. So here's the scoop. The United States ain't happy about Ghana's new legislation. In fact, they are deeply troubled. And when the US ambassador to Ghana starts waving caution flags about potential consequences, you know things are heating up. But hold on your seats because it's about to get even juicier. If this bill becomes law, 
Ghana could kiss international aid goodbye. Yep, you heard that right. No more financial support from Uncle Sam and friends. And as for trade relations, well, let's just say that things could get a little rocky. And speaking of rocky, diplomatic tensions between Ghana and the US could reach new heights. The US government isn't one to mince words when it comes to the LGBTQ plus rights. And this legislation, yeah, it's not exactly winning any brownie points. But wait, there's more. Human rights organizations and activists worldwide are keeping an eye on Ghana. The spotlight's shining bright on this one, and Ghana's reputation is on the line. It's like a high-stakes game of international poker, and the stakes, well, they couldn't be higher. But let's not forget the folks on the ground. Within Ghana, LGBTQ plus individuals and advocates are facing a whole new level of danger. Witch hunts, discrimination is a nightmare scenario, and it's happening right in our backyard. Ghanaian leader Honorable Sam George steps up to the mic and drops a bombshell. He's not missing any words, folks. According to him, Ghana is a sovereign state, and Ghanaians should be calling the shots. No ifs, ends, or buts. But he's got a point, folks. Why should Western powers like the US be poking their noses into Ghanaians' business? Sam George ain't having none of it. He's waving the flag of sovereignty high and proud, just like any true patriot would. But here's where things get real interesting, folks. Sam George ain't just spouting hot air. He's got receipts. He's throwing shade at the US for their hands-off approach to the Isnat real Palestinian conflict. The US says they don't mess with sovereign states' affairs. So why would Ghana be any different? It's a bold move, folks, and one that's sure to ruffle some feathers. But Sam George ain't backing down. He's standing firm on his principles, and you gotta respect that kind of backbone. So what do you think, folks? Is Ghana right to stand up for its sovereignty, or should Western powers be stepping in to lend their help. Now, let's look at some of the implications that this may have on both straight and non-straight citizens. First up, let's talk about the straight folks. Now, you might think this bill doesn't affect them, but social tensions running high and the threat of discrimination looming. It's a whole new ballgame for everyone. Fear, uncertainty, it's a recipe for disaster, and it's hitting close to home for many Ghanaians. But let's not forget about our non-straight brothers and sisters, folks. For them, this bill isn't just a slap in the face. It's a full-blown violation of their rights, their identity, their very existence with the threat of imprisonment and persecution hanging over their heads. It's a nightmare scenario straight out of a dystopian novel. But hold on a minute folks, let's not overlook the elephant in the room. While sovereignty is important, is this really the best way for Africa to flex its muscles? Some voices in the crowd argue that there are some more pressing issues at hand. Issues like economic development, social justice and environmental protection. But hey, maybe there's a silver lining in all this. Perhaps this bill can serve as a catalyst for change, a wake-up call for Ghana and the rest of Africa to prioritize the needs of their people. And as we wait for the president's signature, all we can do is hope for the best and keep pushing for progress. So, what do you think folks? Is Ghana's bill a step forward or a stumble backward? Drop your thoughts in the comments and let's keep the conversation going. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed and keep striving for a better tomorrow. See you in the next one.